So my name is uh, Silvia Boch. I'm the Chief uh, Research Officer at Hubrick Organic Technology and I'm responsible of the research team and the research activities that take place at HUB. By predictive diagnostic or personalized medicine, we mean the capacity to identify the right treatment for each individual patient. Using as an example uh, oncology uh, patients, uh, we are aware that there are different treatments to uh, treat this type of patients, but not all the patients have the same response. So with HAP organoid technology, uh, we aim to generate organoids from the tumors of these patients, expose them to the drugs available, and identify the right treatment for each individual patient. We are aware that uh, drugs and treatments uh, generated in the past uh, were not necessarily having the same impact in all patients and that there is a need uh, to identify the right treatment for each individual patient. And we believe that with organoids, we can provide an in vitro test. We can bring the patient in the lab and test, uh, for example, in oncology, uh, the treatments available on first line treatment and identified what will be the group of drugs that will benefit or will have an impact in the patient. Despite that we will define organoid technology, a very easy uh, technology to implement any lab, in any lab, um, at the same time it's a complex model, uh, or I will say a sensitive model, uh, more close to primary tissues. Uh, so having high quality uh, products ensures uh, the success of establishing this technology in the lab. So uh, very good products uh, from Corning like uh, Matrigel um, are essential for the uh, success of, of establishing uh, these models. Actually, we have a strategic collaboration with Corning to um, validate some of the reagents as uh, organoid uh, proof uh, reagents. So if I have to provide a tip uh, to get the best cell culture results, uh, I'll suggest first um, following uh, the standard protocols that has been developed for uh, establishing uh, organoid technology and also using high light quality reagents uh, to ensure um, a good expansion of the models. Uh, but a tip that may be more close to people working uh, in the lab every day with organoids, when manipulate them, try not to disrupt them to single cell. Uh, they recover better when uh, they are disrupted as fragments of multiple cells, not single cells. And we've seen also an improvement if during the man manipulation for disruption, the organoids are not keep it on ice, uh, but just uh, manipulated at room, at room temperature. So one of the challenges that we encounter for the technology, since our aim is to make it, make it available for the community, is to uh, educate uh, about the complexity and certain requirements that uh, working with this technology uh, are needed to succeed on the establishment. Um, just to bring an example, uh, when working with tumor models, uh, meaning when organoids have been generated from a tumor, uh, from a patient with colorectal cancer or breast cancer, uh, with our technology, we are able to maintain the heterogeneity of the tumor, but if this organoid culture is not cultured properly, uh, it will be uh, in a matter of uh, weeks or months uh, that this uh, culture does not represent the original heterogeneity and that then uh, results in terms of uh, gene expression or drug tests will differ not because of the robustness of the model, but because the model has not been uh, manipulated properly. In terms of opportunities, we want to extend the success that organoids uh, or uh, have organoids have um, meant for CF community to other monogenic diseases. So uh, for cystic fibrosis, uh, we've been able to generate organoid models uh, that can uh, predict patient response and that have been already able to provide access to patients uh, to treatments that uh, in any other way they will have not been able to, to get the access. So uh, we are looking for similar genetic diseases in other system models like liver organoids where we can have this impact uh, in, in the patients.